I call this wine my human litmus test. Um, because honestly, about 90% of people that try it like it. Okay? The other 10%, not human. <laughs> My name is Mike. I work here at Sunfish Cellars. Uh, I have been in wine now for about 20 years. Uh, I became a certified sommelier in 2004, and uh, I've never really looked back from there. Wine 101, intro to wine, intro kind of beginner basic wine. Um, how many of you think that wine is simple? I will dissuade you of that fact. Uh, how many of you think wine is hard? Right? Yeah, I'll dissuade you of that fact as well. Wine is old. It's really, really old. Last year there was a report that came out. Wine is somewhere between 10 and 12,000 years old. Okay? It comes from an area in the Caucasus Mountains. So uh, kind of northern Turkey, Greece, Hungary, or not Hungary, Georgia, over there. At its heart, Wine is an incredibly simple thing. One of my favorite quotes about wine is, all wine is, is water filtered through a vine. For me, it's really important, and it is really kind of vitally tied to so many things, war and culture and religion and people and places, in, in ways that we don't often see right at the top. What we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to talk about five sensations that you have in your mouth, right? These are intangible things. These are things that are cut and dry, and that is what they are. We're going to build upon them. I will talk to you about what they are, and I will inform you of what they are. Um, but it's sugar, it's fruit, it's body, it's acid, and it's tannin. Now, if you think of those five things as like light switches, they're either, or binary, right? They're either on or they're off. One or zero or zero or one, that's it. So all of the wines we're going to taste today will, will have some of these, and they will either be high or low, okay? And the reason we do this is so that you can build a picture of what this wine is. So if you go to the last page in your, your handout, You'll notice, number one, that there's this little kind of chart thing, okay? So you're going to fill that out for every wine. You're either going to say that all the way to the left is zero, all the way to the right is high, okay? Now what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to smell the wine. Don't swirl it, don't do anything, and when I say smell it, I mean get your schnoz in the glass, okay? Now what I'd like you to do is I want you to swirl it. If you've never done it before, put the glass down on the table and draw really tight circles with your fingers and get the wine moving vigorously around the glass, okay? Faster, faster. There you go. You're going to spill it, that's okay. Now what I'd like you to do is pick it up, smell it, and then taste it. So when you're going through the wine tonight, Always swirl it first, then smell it, then taste it. Otherwise, you're not getting very much. Cool? Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing. I, I, I oftentimes will tell people um, it is more important in wine to learn what you don't like, especially starting out, than learning what you do like. Think about milk. So you have gradations there in skim, 1%, 2% cream. That's body, okay? The weight of that, how it feels in your mouth, that is body. This is a full-bodied wine, okay? This is a full-bodied white wine. If you get it in your mouth, it feels heavier. There's, there's a tangible weight to it. If you were to, to get these side by side with the wine that was last, you would probably go, you know what, this is about the same weight. Problem is, is that red wines have more particulate matter suspended in them, so they are by nature heavier. So this is a, a light-bodied red wine, whereas the last time that was a full-bodied white wine. So essentially all it is is it's, it's just a, a base shift. 
we do have a kind of rule, especially in what I call the, or what we call the new world. So that's, you know, North and South America, Australia, New Zealand. The new world way of looking at food and wine is if you like it, drink it with whatever you're eating. Okay. The old world way of, of looking at it is specific wines go with specific foods from specific regions. Neither of them is right. They both kind of negate personal preference. What you should pay attention to is ultimately in food and wine pairing, you are looking for that magic spot where both the wine and the food are made better put together than they are apart. This wine is our example of aged wine. 90% of wine is meant to be consumed within five years of being made. It means that 10% of the wine is meant to age. Yet we have this ideal in our heads, this kind of romantic cultural ideal in our heads, that fine old wine, that all wine should be kept and it should be savored and it should be stored well and it should be, it will get better over time when it's just not freaking true. Most wine does not get better. Most wine is best in its youth. Drink it. If you buy it, drink it. With very few exceptions. Don't hold it, drink it. All the time people come with questions like, hey, so I was in my grandma's attic and I found this bottle of blah, 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 whatever. Drink it. My boss gave me this really nice bottle. Should I drink it? This wine, however, is about 10 years old and it is just starting its life. This wine was crafted and created to become ageable. It was from the get-go, from the vineyards, where they were planted, how they were planted, when it was picked, how it was picked, how the grapes were handled, what they did to it in the winery, what they did to it in the barrel room, what they did to it in the cellar. All of those things go into how this wine builds into its ageability. The average American consumer holds their bottle of wine in their possession for two hours. The time from purchase to consumption is two hours because we all do it. We stop at the liquor store on our way home, we pick up the bottle of wine, we get home and we drink it. That is exactly what it's there for, right? So if you like old wine, you want old wine, go buy old wine. Go buy good old wine. We drink our red wines too warm and we drink our white wines too cold. Put your red wine in the fridge for 15, 20 minutes before you serve it. Take your white wines out and let them warm up a little bit. You will notice that a lot happens when you get outside of the 32 degrees or 70 degrees. The average room temperature in the United States is 74. I guarantee you that if I served you all of these red wines at 74 degrees and 68 degrees, you would like the one that made at 68 or served at 68 degrees. 74 is too warm, right? But that's the average room temperature. Knowing that we're fudging the system a little bit and we're telling you to chill your wine down. Because historic room temperature in places like the old world in France and Italy and Germany, you know, is usually 59, 60. That's about where red wine should be served. Not ch chilled, not cold, but cooler than what we do, do normally consu consume them at. Most people have no idea what their dollar is getting them or not getting them when they're buying wine. Minnesota specifically, we have a sale culture, which means people don't buy things unless it's on sale. As you are learning more about wine on your own, pick one set. Say, I'm only going to spend between 10 and $15 per wine and buy everything within that area. Use your phone. Everyone's got a stinking start phone. We all do. Take pictures of the ones you like. Forget the ones you don't. It is great when people walk in and say, hey, I had this wine. Do you have something like it? I want this wine between this price. It, again, if they can't give you that or give you at least some recommendations, don't go back. They're not worth your time. Any last questions? Awesome. Thank you for coming very much. Um, I hope you had...
fun and I hope you learned something.